So uh, you see, if we look at the price to earning multiples of the Indian markets as on date, they are at they're not just at the medians; they are they are almost all time highs, right? Not all time high. All time highs have been closer to thirty. Also, I am not standalone PE, right? Uh, yeah, Which changed in yeah, 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so markets are uh, more. So the way to think about these P's, uh, you know, while P's are very simple hack to generally get a pulse of the temperature of the market. That is, it too hot or is it too cold? And if it is too hot, you will burn your fingers. It's better to invest when it's too cold, when it's not popular. So the range of valuations for Nifty or Nifty 500 has been between 12 times to 25 times. So we are above average, no doubt. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's clear it's above average. So there's no debate on that. Data should just. So do you that. think that it it is the right time to like? Of course, I'm I'm myself not a fan of uh, timing the markets, but uh, I'm just asking it for the larger audience. That uh, do you think it still makes sense to invest more in India than in countries like China or the emerging other emerging market economies where the uh, where the earning multiples and the you know price to book multiples are not just at below their median but at their almost all time lows say for example china so let me confuse you first okay. by giving a nuance that uh, there are many stocks which are at 10p and there are many stocks which are at 30p it doesn't mean 10 is cheap right because if that 10 belongs to something which is a piece of crap or which is not a great business correct uh, and which is eventually on its journey to go to 8 then even 10 is expensive right so just uh, one number alone uh, is incomplete information to make a judgment. Right. So likewise, there will be many countries at uh, 15p versus our 23p. Doesn't mean 15 is necessarily cheap compared to 23 because you have to add other nuances like what is the ROE of that country's uh, profit. So if there are 50 companies of that index versus 50 companies of India, but if here the profit growth is only 5% and the ROE is only 11%, uh, whereas your profit growth is 12%, and ROEs are 16%, then this company deserves a slightly higher, significantly higher value. So we have to look at it from that nuance and not just go on one variable. Right. So the way we I think about this is that for a country like ours with a broad long-term average growth rate of 12%, profits on an average have grown at 12%, ROEs have been around 15, 16%. A 16, 17 multiple is a fair multiple. That is fair and you know, if you invest at that level, whatever is the incremental earnings growth or ROE, you learn that much. But now, instead of 17, 16p, we are paying. 23, uh, 24. We are paying roughly uh, one and a half years of extra uh, multiple. So maybe I, we can have a period of one or two years of moderate returns, or right. even negative returns, or even zero returns. Can happen. But which is exactly what I was saying in the beginning that is the price to pay for you to earn 4 to 6% over fixed income. Right. If, if you don't do this, you will invest in fixed income at 7%. Right. Uh, but in fixed income, you will get 7 for the next 10 years. Uh, if you buy a 10 year bond at 7, you will earn 7 only. You will not earn more. So the journey from 7 to 12% return uh, is possible only because of these type of uh, uh, uncertainties. Right. So how do I solve for this uh, extra valuation now just because market is expensive? Um, uh, you know, it has to fall. No, there are long periods of time where expensive markets have remained expensive. So each investor has to make that call. What do I do for myself? Uh, if I find markets go towards, you know, the last range of valuation, higher bands like right now it is. And on the other end, what are the alternatives available? So if I am able to have a global portfolio uh, of 15 to 20% ROE at similar growth rates as India, available closer to 18 to 20 times, slightly cheaper than India. So let me start infusing some part of that in the portfolio. So I'm still in equity, but I'm diversifying the valuation risk to some extent. That's the first step. Second is keep some in bonds and gold, uh, because uh, generally till around six, eight months back, bond gold for last 10 years had gone nowhere in dollar terms. So, so you, you know, it's an asset class which has no supply or very limited supply. Unlike stocks and bonds where, you know, you can keep printing you can keep issuing equity and dilution keeps happening. This asset, so you you have to nuance it by saying that, okay, gold for seven, eight years has gone nowhere. It is now relatively cheap compared to this asset class. Let me then add some bit of gold in the portfolio or some bit of bonds in the portfolio or some bit of global stocks in the portfolio. And the, another way to, to solve for this valuation uh, is by doing more of staggered investing. So that whenever valuations normalize, instead of putting all the money today, my money will keep getting allocated. So that's the SIP or systematic transfer way. So there are many manners in which you can solve for um, expensive valuations, either by diversifying asset class 
or diversifying in the same asset class over a period of time. Because at some point valuations will mean revert and you'll be able to deploy at that point in time. So uh, my approach is hence uh, a more, so I have a slightly crude hack which has worked for me maybe 75-80% of times, it doesn't work 20% of times is reasonably cheap or fairly valued markets, incrementally I invest in equities. Um, reasonably expensive markets, I invest in asset allocation funds. So it's a simple two-line investment Asset framework. allocation as in hybrid funds? Hybrid funds. So it could be multi-asset, which means Indian equity, global equity, gold and bonds. Or it could be just equity saving funds, which are equity and, you know, arbitrage combination. Anything which is hybrid, which is, you know, less of equity portfolio in that. And, and some of them are dynamic so that when valuations become reasonable, it will automatically shift. I don't have to take any action. Got it. It will do what I should have done. Got it. Uh, also, if I have to do actions on my own by moving from one fund to another, I will keep paying capital gains tax. And every rupee paid today uh, is a loss of 20 rupees over the next 30 years. So, better to be in a vehicle where I can stay invested for long. So, in, in, in summary, valuations are high and hence I prefer a more uh, asset-allocated portfolio. Got it.